Look ahead. Hello, welcome. This is Here's to Your Good Health. My name is Linda Prezioso. I'm a nurse practitioner at Family Medical Center. And we have some special guests tonight. I'm so excited. I've just met them. We have Chester Williams, who is the CEO, and we have Maybell Williams, who I've just deemed her as MIC, which is Mommy in Charge. So but she's also, she says she's a positive influence for her son, which any, any mom out there knows that that's what we do for our kids, where our, we try to be as positive as possible for our children. Yes. So welcome. It's so yes. nice of you to be here. Thank I'm you. really excited. They've got something exciting to talk about, and I don't even know kind of where to start, so I think I'm just going to pass it right on to Chester and have him tell us his story how he got here. You're from Edgecombe County or you moved oh. there? Or? Um, originally from Halifax County, born and raised right across the Fishing Creek oh, okay. um, in Enfield. Uh -huh. um, but I do have a lot of strong ties to Edgecombe and Nash County. Um, um, family that lives in the area, a lot of friends. Um, actually attended North Carolina Western in college. Oh, did you? Yes. Um, took some classes here in accounting. Mm -hmm. Accounting has been very grateful. But um, how I got to this moment here now with ABC2, it started out as a vision that was given to me in the eighth grade. Um, eighth grade? I, yes. Um, a wow. very English teacher at Enfield Middle School, Donna Moore. Um, she was Donna Sykes at the time, but Donna Moore. Um, Hi, Donna, if you're watching, congratulations. Yes. You're seeing one of your success stories. <laughs> and she was very firm of us writing journals. Uh, so we had daily entries, and this particular day was an entry about the change that you see in your community or wish to see in your community. And I literally wrote the words, a better chance, a better community, that if you give the community a chance, it can better itself. Absolutely. Um, and because we have the resources, we know that it's, we have lived experiences, and most times we are thinking about different situations, but my idea went a little deeper is about giving young people the opportunity to have their voice shared and be a part of some of the solutions that are in the community. But... As with any eighth grader and a mom like I had, <laughs> you know, the goal was you're going to go graduate high school and yeah, go to college. That's right. And that was the plan, and that's exactly what I did. Um, I left here and graduated from Southeast Halifax High School, went to North Carolina A&T State University in, Green, in Greensboro. Mm -hmm. um, they came and took accounting classes, did Halifax Community College, then went to graduate school mm -hmm. at Indiana University in Bloomington. Oh, uh, wow. So you went out into the cold. Yes. <laughs> That's a funny story there about the cold. Okay. So well, we'll hear about the cold, the story. <laughs> yes. I like stories. So the first year that I left here in 2006 to go to Indiana, Lord, that I you know, when you pack for North Carolina winter, it's uh -huh. a lot different than yes, yes, the sir. Midwest. Yes, sir. I didn't know that. <laughs> you found out real fast, didn't you? So I had thin jackets and stuff, and that was the year that um, Bloomington got a lot of snow, and I learned what negative two degrees was. Oh, yeah. And snow that was yes. on, and schools did not close. Yes. So we still had to maneuver. So mm -hmm. let's just say I easily had to make some decisions and buy some bigger coats and uh -huh. more sweaters yes. and things like that for that winter. And most winter, winter starts in October. Yeah, you can see I'm snow. from Minnesota. Yes. I know all about it. So it was just a new experience, uh -huh. but I, I loved it. It was a great experience. And then when I moved back here in 2012, um, I came back to be with my family. My grandmother was ill at that time and she wanted us back. And I came back here, taught at Greensboro County High School in Emporia, Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm nothing against education. It was a lot different than when I was coming along. So it was not like I was able to teach. Um, it was more teach the test. And that's something yeah. that I really struggle with because young people have different learning styles that's and you should right. be able to make the lessons right. come to life and not to have that flexibility. Um, so I was like, what should I do? Mm -hmm. um, stumbled upon the journal and there it was, the vision. Um, so went to my alma mater, Southeast Halifax High School um, for alumni career day and that was eye opening for me um, to go back to my high school with the experiences I had, international travel, and done a lot of things, teaching, 
that a lot of students could not accept that I was from there. Yeah, it was like a whole different vibe. And and with that contest, they couldn't believe that I've had those experiences. Um, and especially being for rural Northeastern North Carolina, mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. um, you don't really get to see what's outside of, in, in the that's world. That's right, that's right. Um, and a lot of young people don't have that opportunity. It is very unfortunate. But I think now with internet, you can go anywhere possibly. Yes, yes. But it's not but the But you're not going to feel that cold. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So after that experience, um, five young people helped start what ABC2 is now. Five young people said, we're going to take a chance with you, Mr. Chester, on this vision to start this nonprofit. And that nonprofit is ABC2, which is A Better Chance, A Better Community. And one of the first projects that these young people um, worked on was food access or access to healthy foods. Um, it wasn't called food insecurity at that time. It was just called access to healthy foods. So we would take a trip to some of the local farms that's in the area. Mm -hmm. um, Eunice Hill, which is out on Whitaker's, mm -hmm. they visit her farm to learn about how to her. grow. Mm -hmm. And then we came back to Enfield mm -hmm. and they work with the youth that there was at the Parks and Rec Department and growing cucumbers and onions and things like that. So put raised bed at the downtown square. It wasn't called the downtown square then. <laughs> but then once they had raised beds down there, the community, the town got involved mm -hmm. and then it grew into the downtown square. It was the farmer's market and that sparked the young people. Isn't that awesome? Yes. yes. So it doesn't Mom take and Charles, much. you told me it was a good story. <laughs> so yeah. it doesn't take much, it's just a spark. Your change can ignite other change and then mm -hmm. everybody excited now it still exists is where they do the um, Christmas tree lighting and now it's a beautiful space that was created just by spark Wow and it doesn't have to be too much to right. others it may not be much but your change is connected to other people changing you can incite in other yes. people to see if you could do it i could do it too. that's right and that's the whole thing mm -hmm. pay it forward so yes. to speak you know yes. you're going to influence johnny and then johnny's going to influence pete and pete's going to influence yes. dewan and i mean that's how it works and that's the way it's supposed to work that Absolutely. is awesome so you are teach you are you're teaching oh not now just, i love teaching i mean you're teaching in your job it's yes. just not a teacher absolutely in a, a school but you, you're teaching about life and That's you're teaching right. good healthy you know um, habits eating growing your own food eating good food absolutely. that is awesome yes. so it's um, a better chance a better community yes. exactly. and you've given the chance and now you've made that community better exactly so what 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 project other projects have you had Whew. So we have done a lot over the years. Um, we've done a lot of work with the Healthy Corner Store Initiative as in terms of increasing access foods to communities that have like the local convenience stores. Mm -hmm. So they have access there. Uh, we have worked a lot with um, um, voters engagement. So we have done party at the polls throughout the okay. this region mm -hmm. um, as in terms of encouraging people to vote and, mm -hmm. and being an educated voter and being aware. Right. Um, because sometimes in our communities we get misinformation so we're about putting the facts out there and then you go to the polls. I don't right. care who you vote for. Just right. that you make a conscious right. decision. And, and most times it's about your values. You need to right. know if people align with your right. values, then those are the people you should vote for. That's right. Um, and we do a lot of work around um, voter registration to get people registered, but more specifically 16 and 17 year olds to pre-register so they can learn about the civic engagement process and right. the importance of voting. Right. And then taking it a step further is to be able to advocate um, because our young people are very strong will. They have opinions um, and they feel that they um, contribute to democracy so they should have a say. So advocate to, to lower the voting 100%. age to 16. And well, I don't know if I agree with that. <laughs> Because I've raised three kids and I've got a 20-year-old granddaughter and other grandchildren as well. But anyway, that that's my own opinion. I mean, we all got an opinion, uh, right? Right, and yeah. we welcome that. And that's how we have conversations and, and build and make changes. If we mm -hmm. don't communicate, that creates a lot of the um, division in our community. Right, and you've got to be open to what they've got to say. Exactly. You don't necessarily have to agree with it, but you've got to be able... That's what's wrong with our world today. Oh, yeah. If if I say this and you don't agree, well then automatically you just don't like me and that's just crazy. Yeah. You know, we all can have an opinion and we that's can right. work to 
to together. settle things out. That's mm-hmm. that's what democracy is supposed yeah, to be. Exactly. Well, I mean, we may not agree that one thing, but I'm sure we're going to find other things. We're going to find we something agree. to agree on. Exactly. That's exactly right. So this came when you were in the eighth grade. That is just really amazing. So. Uh, um, what are you doing specifically in Edgecombe County? We're going to talk yes. about this in a minute, but do you have any other projects in Edgecombe County going on? Well, in Edgecombe County, along with the vast equity that we're going to talk about, we have our World Changes program where we recruit young people um, into the program, where they take what their passion is, um, what they want to do, if they have an idea, and how do we change that into something that can be a positive impact on the community, whether it's a program to talk about stigma, or if it's an event for young people to come together to talk about um, anything that's impacting them if it's child nutrition or how to um, communicate with the county commissioners teaching them them life skills so they be able to be civically engaged in their community but also doing it in a positive way because sometimes we see advocacy can get very antagonistic but we're not teaching that we're teaching to how to understand the process um, running for right. office and why right. it's important right. for you to have a role in your community because right. you are a part of the community Absolutely. and you are by you and if you have any organization with adults I would say we want the youth to be more engaged mm-hmm. so we try to create that pipeline where youth are engaged but also maybe have their voices to be able to speak and articulate what their needs are that's awesome do you work at all with kids to encourage them to get further education you know help them to understand that there is money out there to help you to go to school if mommy and daddy can't afford it those kind of things always um we um that's part of our life scale program is connecting them to resources but also um building that in the interdependency mm-hmm. to be able to do it on their own but also we do have a scholarship program in ABC too that we give out to our seniors when they graduate um, so with that program we're proud because the young people created it for themselves yes. um, so they become very engaged we have a 4-H club we have a GIS club um, where young people our GIS club is not restricted just to Halifax it's open abroad because we're remote we're virtual right, in this space and right, we're able to do so right. much. Um, so with the Jazz Club, we have been able to do a lot to connect young people to technology, but also connect them to understand mapping and GIS and um, connected to a wall audit they did in Scotland Neck. So there will be other wall audits that's going to come through Halifax, Northampton, Nash County that's going to incorporate GIS, teaching techno- well, young people teaching technology so to seniors. Let me tell, show my ignorance. What is GIS? Woo! Geospatial, I can't even say it today. I need Dylan here to tell yes. me exactly what it is. <laughs> so it's the mapping system that is used in a lot of like tax department. They use these mapping when they collect data. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. I got gotcha. you. Oh, okay. I, I, I wasn't quite sure what that was. Yes. We use it every day. We but just don't realize what we're using it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's a great concept that should be included in our educational system. They should teach this on the elementary, middle, and high school level how to use mapping because with mapping you can actually tell stories and you can be able to compare like poverty to hunger to child nutrition to obesity and see the correlations between the two because then now you can talk about some realistic solutions that will address right. multiple issues right. in the community right um so, and that's important for us especially in rural east yes, north carolina because we just don't have a lot that's right. and you know i don't even know if all of the people in raleigh realize what we don't have exactly. but it, there's a lot we don't have here yes. I, I work in the medical community and i see it every day mm-hmm. so, and i know you certainly do so um all right so um do you have an office that you work out of or you just work have computer will travel or um, about that. So we do have a two-acre community farm where we do have office space there, and we're adding a, commu- a computer lab and greenhouse. So that's our home space. Um, prior to that, we have community spaces throughout where the young people are. We like to go where they are, like the libraries or community mm-hmm. centers mm-hmm. or rec centers, because that's where the young people are to be able to have these conversations. Because you and I know transportation is a barrier. Yes. Yes. And in Edgecombe, Halifax, mm-hmm. these counties are pretty large. Yes. And it takes a lot. Very to, rural. Exactly. A whole lot of land and not a whole lot of buildings. Um, yeah. So that's one of the things early on that I was very happy to have community partners in the communities where the young people live so that we didn't really have to have a overhead. 
But then when we got to the point where we need one, we still have our community spaces where we do. So meet. where is your space located with your acreage and your soon-to-be greenhouse? Yes, <laughs> it's located in the center of Halifax. If you have the map of Halifax, a picture figure in the middle like a pinwheel, that's literally the location of the community farm. It's located um, off of Essex 160, mm -hmm. off of Interstate 95, about three miles off of 561. Um, awesome. People are always welcome to come. It's a very peaceful place. It's a peace and serenity, uh, which I thank God for uh, because he gave me the vision mm -hmm. and I'm following the journey that he's given mm -hmm. me. So, yes, I may be the CEO, but he's the author of it. So I have to be obedient. And because of my obedience, it has really grown and fostered something that has touched a lot of people's lives, yes. um, young people and their families, to start thinking differently. Like, I can be the change I need to be in my mm -hmm. community and mm -hmm. not waiting for a cavalry horse. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not knocking the cavalry horse, <laughs> but sometimes you have to take that first step yourself. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think we all need to have visions, and we all yes. need to have goals, and yes. we're all created for a purpose and yes. a plan. And, you know, mine has been a nurse practitioner, and I can touch a lot of people where I work every day and then through this this um, show as well and so I know that that's one of the reasons God put me here God obviously has put you here for this vision and mommy in charge is just hanging in and doing what she needs she's probably the jack of all trades right whatever she, needs to be done yeah. she does she's hospitality yeah she's the volunteer coordinator yeah. and then she's also the mom um, especially yeah. to the young people uh -huh. because sometimes I mean, even though many have moms at home, not knocking moms at home, but sometimes in the community, mm -hmm. it is good to have that reinforcement of that mother's love because mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, people are not don't have that mother's That's love right. at home. Mom is working two jobs, or mom's yeah. strung out in drugs, and grandma's taking care of. I mean, there's all sorts of stories. Yes. Right. So you know that the traditional stay at home with two kids and a white picket mm -hmm. fence. That's yeah. not mm -hmm. not really what's happening yeah. today all right it's time for our first break so when we come back we're going to talk about the vax equity block party so Ooh. don't go away i don't know what it is but we're going to find out so we'll be back in just a minute don't go away At Downey's Hearing Care Associates, we are dedicated to taking care of every client by providing personal, high-quality hearing care services. My staff and I know hearing loss affects each person and their loved ones differently, so we give you the time and the care you need to ensure the hearing technology chosen fits your lifestyle. At Downey's Hearing Care, we also make custom ear molds and specialize in emergency hearing aid repairs. Down East Hearing Care Associates has two locations, one in Nightdale and one in Rocky Mount. We have hearing lives to save. Hi, I'm Richard Goss, pharmacist and owner of Almond's Drug Store here in Rocky Mount. I'm here today with my wife and two daughters. For over 75 years, Almond's Drug Store has been the pharmacy of choice for residents of Edgecombe and Nash County. Our family is proud to call Rocky Mount home, and we are excited about the new services and products we are adding daily at both of our Almond's Drug Store's locations and also at our medical supply store. Come in and see us at Almond's Medical Supply. We're an extension of Almond's Drug Store's, your local hometown pharmacy. We're here to service all your needs, from wheelchairs to walkers to orthopedic supports, to compression hose, to hard-to-find wound care supplies and you'll always get that hometown customer service. We want our patients to pay the best prices, get the best service available, and have a better pharmacy experience than they will get anywhere else. Our staff is committed to going above and beyond to meet our patients' needs. Whether it is working with your provider to get you the best medication at the best price, contacting your provider to get you refills or a pre-authorization, or taking the time to review each of your medications with you personally, or perhaps even helping you find an old-time remedy or other hard-to-find items, your Almond's Drug Store staff will work hard to meet your pharmacy needs. At Almond's, we will deliver your prescriptions for free. Both of our stores have drive through windows, we guarantee short wait times, and our pharmacists will come out to greet you personally and answer any questions you have. If you want to be met with a smiling face, or even want someone to greet you by name when you walk through the doors, we are the pharmacy for you. 
Call Owens Drugs today. 443-3138 or 446-0014. Well, hey, welcome back. This is Linda Prezioso, and this is Here's to Your Good Health. And we're talking to some, about something that's a little bit different, but anybody who watches this show knows that community service is near and dear to my heart, and helping people is near and dear to my, health, my heart, and growing your own food and doing things like that is absolutely near and dear to my heart. So I feel like this is a, a, this is a, a health program as well. It's just... I guess mo some mental health along with some physical health and lots of good for your soul health because you're helping other people you're helping God's creations so Chester let's get right into what is this Vax Equity Block Party that's a mouthful it is a mouthful oh my god the Vax um, Equity Block Party is to be able to um, lighten up and have a conversation about vaccinations and COVID-19 because it's have been an experience. It has been a year yes, for many of us. Mm -hmm. um, understanding and wrapping around what it is, the mutation, everything that's happening, but understanding that individually we have a choice. Mm -hmm. um, there are vaccinations out there for us. There's Moderna, there's Pfizer, and there's Johnson & Johnson, and we want people to have the facts yes. about the vaccination, so we call it the VATS, VATS VAT. Um, so one, we're going around to four counties that we have special interest in, that's Halifax, Northampton, Edgecombe, and Hereford County. And the reason why we have special interest in these counties, they're dear to me. I have family in each one of them, and they're all a little bit reflexive of each other being very rural, but the percentages of people vaccinated is very, very low. And even now with the Delta variant, we have to be very careful and cautious. Mm -hmm. um, it's been one thing being safe. And it's one thing to have some questions about the vaccination. That's what you should. But making sure that you're seeking out uh, professionals to get that questions answered. So you have the absolute facts about um, what are the side effects, um, what possibilities are there. Um, is it putting a chip in you? These different things that are in the community really <laughs> yeah, alarm. Well, it's out there and people believe it. So you've got to you've got to give them the facts. So I want to provide an opportunity to do a community resource fair to be able to highlight community resources that are available, not just for vaccination. Because when we talk about health, we got to talk about the whole health. Mm -hmm. Like you was talking about mental mm -hmm. wellness. Mm -hmm. Those resources will be available there. Mm -hmm. Also access to healthy food, access to water, those things. We need to know those things for our overall health because mm -hmm. even with the vaccine, we still got to have a good diet. We still got to have a good um, diet, um, exercise regimen and things like that. But with the vax part, it's able to bring us together, practicing social distancing, wearing your mask, being able to have access to those resources, to a food truck, DJ just have a good time like you do in your backyard with your family and friends mm -hmm. but also have the opportunity to be vaccinated be able to ask questions but to get vaccinated if you choose and make that decision for yourself by any means we're not forcing you we want you to have access to the right information and make that decision for yourself and then have access to the vaccine of your choice gotcha so why do you think that they have not been very highly vaccinated in those counties is it lack of ability to get there lack of availability of the vaccination lack of education what i would say all of the above but for me i think it's fear oh really mm -hmm. a lot of times people scare the needles yeah well. just that simple but at the same time the conversations we're having and even certain media really hype it up to the point that you're scared mm -hmm. like should i should i not talking about the deaths and talking about the number of people who are in the hospital and it's just accelerated in a way that it's like oh my god back in the day we didn't have so much access to news around the world mm -hmm. it was in your community right. and in rural communities there was a huge delay at the beginning of the impact that it had on us we're really feeling it now and some people are starting to really feel it at home that people are dying from this yeah. that wasn't a big deal in the rural communities before mm -hmm. but even now like 
several events that we have done to this day, people just said, I'm going to wait. I want to see. It's like it's a experiment. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what science is when we talk about vaccine. We've been through this before, Ebola. Mm -hmm. Even with HIV, even with the polio, group. all the way back. Right, um, but the process was never so vastly available and open and shared. Right. This process has been on the social media, the mishaps, those things, things, the fail of the projects and things like that have happened has discouraged a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, the trials. Um, yeah. So people are fearful, and rightfully so. But I always say if you have the right information, you can make the right decision and choices for yourself and your family. Mm -hmm. So that's all I wanted to just provide that opportunity because information is not connected in rural communities because broadband is an issue. Um, people don't have access um, to the vaccines. Mm -hmm. um, people, we really don't talk to our doctors and our physicians like we're supposed to. Um, we went to doctors to tell us it fits us versus telling them what's really going right. on. Right. So a lot of people may have COVID but may have mild and think it's a cold or make it mm -hmm. think it's a fever mm -hmm. and not really understanding that you need to go get tested and then you need to talk about the vaccines and you need to get vaccinated and select one that's the best for you. Um, it's dire. Our life is very important mm -hmm. and critical and it take each one of us to accept what our role is. If it's to get vaccinated, get vaccinated. If you choose not to, wear your mask, stay mm -hmm. home, mm -hmm. be respectful of life. Mm -hmm. And we know that even in the science cycle with the world, people say the world is cleaning herself out now, that she's resetting herself. And that's quite possibly true. But at the same time, we have to think about what have we done to the earth to protect her. Mm -hmm. And that goes into many as <laughs> and it can lead to a lot of right discussions, <laughs> but are we really truly taking care of the world? Because mm -hmm. we have to play our role and we have to understand that the choices that we made and the young people and I, we joke sometimes that we talk about COVID, it's always about washing hands. Yes, it's those basic things mm -hmm. that we have got so far away from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, we've had the flu around yes. for so long yeah. that people just say, oh, it's just the flu. Mm -hmm. But now there's a, a new variation of this flu that is different. And yes. we don't know how it's going to work. And we don't know how it's going to affect people yet. That all is to be, to, you know, come as we learn more. But you've got to take advantage of what you've got, which is what we've got with vaccines so right sorry. now. Sorry. You know, so um, I'm sorry about the, the fear. That, that kind of blew me away, that. Yeah. That statistic. So, in Hertford County, which I don't even know where that is, I've heard of it. Yes. Uh, what what's in what city or town is in Hertford? A Husky, Murfreesboro. Oh. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Um, so, do they have like rural clinics? Like you know, there's I, rural clinics around here. Like I get like Gaston has one, and Enfield so, might have one. We're very fortunate um, to have community health centers and then rural health group, which I'm a board of directors member of. Oh, okay. Um, so rural health group along with local health departments and in Hereford County, the Ronald Shawan Community Health Center, they have been very proactive. They're um, really addressing when we talk about vast equity, really looking into those um, communities that are historically marginalized. Um, that's what we saw a lot of the stigma come into as in terms of getting mm -hmm. the marriage because um, when you start thinking about black and brown communities, there's a historical context with the Z Tuskegee Institute research. Mm -hmm. So that's bubbling up for a lot of people, mm -hmm. um, especially from our community leaders who are having these conversations and really bringing to light some of the historical things and stripes in our country, which right. adds to the right. fear now. Right. Um, so I mean, there's room for all conversations, but like I said, make sure the facts are there. Let's not just suppose, and let's not just blindly <laughs> believe what they say on television. Exactly. Let's really find out what the facts that's right. are. Because that's, Cause that's something my grandmother and my mama always taught me. Uh -huh. You research and you do it for yourself, no one can take it from you. That's, that's right. right. That's that exactly you know right. for an absolute fact. Mm -hmm. yeah. go and ahead. If you love yourself, you go ahead and do what good for yourself mm -hmm. and help others. That's the way you be taught up to do. You know. Mm -hmm. 
And I think Chester's pretty blessed to have you as a mama, and his yes, grandmama sure. sounds like she was a one she or was. is a wonderful woman. I'm not sure she if she's still with us. No, she not. She's not with us anymore. She's sweet. <laughs> yes. She's I dancing miss. with Jesus. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. Yes, and with the event for Saturday, it's open to anyone. Everybody oh, yes. can come and partake of this. So we have one in Edgecombe County at Edgecombe Community College in Tarboro. That is correct. From 11 to 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. We'll have a water station there because we are in August. It's hot. <laughs> it sure is, honey. <laughs> um, so we have a food truck, branded food truck. If you haven't tried branded food, Ooh. it is absolutely amazing. Yes. Um, with these parties, we do healthy food. So at our Halifax Community College party, um, she prepared, prepared um, veggie kebabs and chicken kebabs over a brown, um, bed of brown rice with a teriyaki sauce. Oh, yeah. And it was Heaven's good. Um, mm -hmm. So she's doing a Mexican style Chipotle uh, rice bowl in Edgecombe. Ah, oh, awesome. Um, so we want to be able to incorporate healthy food mm -hmm. so people can understand what healthy eating because mm -hmm. um, I need to eat. I do eat healthy. <laughs> so, but this is a product of being able, well, living in a community that sometimes don't. Um, well, we say we don't have access, but as I learned during this work, we do have access and sometimes we create our own access points. But with our events, we make sure we have a food truck there that can take produce from local farmers and turn into something that you can be able to try at home. So you can have that recipe, that's something great. simple, yes. because that sometimes is, you can give me produce, but I may not know how to prepare it. That's right. Um, that's exactly and most right. times we think healthy is eating a salad. Mm -hmm. Um, but being able to switch it up a little bit, try new mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. try eggplants, and you'd be amazed that, that there could be some things that could produce or vegetables that could be substitute for meat and still get that satisfaction and pleasure of I uh, know and energy. taste. It yes. can be very tasty. Yeah. And, and that's what we try to get across here um, at our events. We um, invite local farmers to come and do a farmers market there, mm -hmm. so you have access to that. Because in our way of thinking. We're about connecting resources at ABC too. Mm -hmm. So if you come into a vaccination event, you're going to get vaccination um, information, but you're also going to know what's available in your community. Right. Um, and then if you want to get vaccinated, hey, there you go, right there. I, if you're going to be able to do it right there, right there there'll, the be, there'll yes. be nurses or somebody to yes. um, oh, administer. Oh, I see. With uh -huh. the administrator of the vaccines, okay. um, and they are part of the state in, um, incentive program. Mm -hmm. So if it's first time getting vaccinated, um, you'll be eligible for a hundred dollar Visa card. Oh. And if you are the driver that I brings have that, done it already. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're the driver that brings that individual mm -hmm. um, to get vaccinated, that driver will get twenty five dollars. But you have to stay and wait till they're finished and take them back home, and then you get twenty five dollars. Okay, I didn't even know that. And for the hundred dollars, it's for the eighteen and up. So um, teenagers still come and get vaccinated. But you're not eligible. Bring for your $100. older brother, and yes. you guys can split the visa card. That's there right. You go. Yeah. Um, so, and we're. And is this free, or is there a charge? It's free. free. It is absolutely free. Want you just to the come food and enjoy too? the food Everything. too. Wow. You can't beat that, can you? You can't beat that. Was a stick, <laughs> honey. <laughs> Good a food and cold water and yes. meet new people. Yes. Oh, great about music. that. From DJ three two one, so and I think many people in Edgecombe County, Nash, Halifax know him. Um, he's worked at the radio stations throughout. He have done many engagements from weddings, but um, he played good family music. He is a great and right. awesome DJ, and he's also very conscious about health and wellness. He's a vet, um, vegan, um, so okay. and he brings that to the table to educate about mm -hmm. his life, his mm -hmm. journey, mm -hmm. that it wasn't easy to become mm -hmm. a, to be vegan. Um, so I think that sometimes being able to share our own lived experience with diets and healthy living, I think that makes us stronger to understand that yes. it's a lifestyle, yes. but it's a journey. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to take our second break, and then when we come back, I'm going to talk some more about cooking <laughs> okay. and learning how to prepare foods because that's been a big thing on my heart. Oh, yes. All right, so we're going to take our next break. Don't go away, and when we come back, we're going to talk more about um, ABC2. I love it. A, a better chance, a better community. I just love that. It's so good. All right, don't go away. We'll be right back.
At Downey's Hearing Care Associates, we are dedicated to taking care of every client by providing personal, high-quality hearing care services. My staff and I know hearing loss affects each person and their loved ones differently, so we give you the time and the care you need to ensure the hearing technology chosen fits your lifestyle. At Downey's Hearing Care, we also make custom ear molds and specialize in emergency hearing aid repairs. Down East Hearing Care Associates has two locations, one in Nightdale and one in Rocky Mount. We have hearing lives to save. When faced with special care needs for elderly or disabled loved ones, families want compassionate, comforting care. That's Tender Touch Home Care Services' goal, providing the level of care we would expect for our own. With over 10 years of home care excellence, Tender Touch provides an array of services that keeps your loved one at home. From personal care, light housekeeping, errands, and meal preparation to our private duty care program, which combines all of our home care offerings in one package. Tender Touch Home Care Services, where your needs are our concern. Hi, I'm Richard Goss, pharmacist and owner of Almond's Drug Store here in Rocky Mountain. Here today with my wife and two daughters. For over 75 years, Almond's Drug Store has been the pharmacy of choice for residents of Edgecombe and Nash County. Our family is proud to call Rocky Mount home, and we are excited about the new services and products we are adding daily at both of our Almonds Drug Stores locations and also at our medical supply store. Come in and see us at Almonds Medical Supply. We're an extension of Almonds Drug Stores, your local hometown pharmacy. We're here to service all your needs from wheelchairs to walkers to orthopedic support, compression hose to hard to find wound care supplies and you'll always get that hometown customer service. We want our patients to pay the best prices, get the best service available, and have a better pharmacy experience than they will get anywhere else. Our staff is committed to going above and beyond to meet our patients' needs. Whether it is working with your provider to get you the best medication at the best price, contacting your provider to get you refills or a pre-authorization, or taking the time to review each of your medications with you personally, or perhaps even helping you find an old-time remedy or other hard-to-find items, your Almonds Drug Store staff will work hard to meet your pharmacy needs. At Almonds, we will deliver your prescriptions for free. Both of our stores have drive through windows, we guarantee short wait times, and our pharmacists will come out to greet you personally and answer any questions you have. If you want to be met with a smiling face, or even want someone to greet you by name when you walk through the doors, we are the pharmacy for you. Call Owens Drugs today. 443-3138 or 446-0014. Hello, hello, welcome back to Here's to Your Good Health. I've been chatting in between segments here. I have two new good friends, and I, these are lovely people. I'm so excited that they've been here, and they um, are sharing their vision, sharing their hard work, and sharing what they're doing for our community, just because I didn't know where Hertford was. <laughs> I didn't know where Edgecombe County is, and, and they're going to be there on Saturday. Um, so you, um, how do you pay for all this? Well, um, it's very good that we do have a lot of community support with our community sponsors, but we did um, receive funding through um, Healthy Together through NC Count, a part of the state initiative good. to do um, vaccination equity in our communities and do it in a very intentional way. Um, as a part of community engagement um, so people are really connected to this work and understanding this work and that's why we do have the VASPAT. We actually hire people in the community to be a part of the VASPAT. They can do phone banking, they can go out in the community do canvas in the past, our flyers, or actually be a part of the planning of these events to make sure it has that that essence of the community that we are in because mm -hmm. each community is different and want to make sure that we stay true to that yeah. because I may not be I may not live in Edgecombe County but I want to support Edgecombe right. County and stay true to that because when I move on to do the next party I'm still gonna be connected to Edgecombe County sure but these community res uh, partners that's gonna be the community resources fair they're here and they've been here right so this may create new opportunities where they can partner and know what's taking place in the county and then expand that even more um, because that's 
That's what the pandemic has done. Like you said, mm -hmm. brought us together. So mm -hmm. now we have to work together and be mm -hmm. strategic That's and right. intentional how we work together and be honest and authentic. Right. And the organizations that I have met here are absolutely amazing and offer amazing services, but it's that connectivity. That's what we need. People in rural yeah. communities need access. Yes. Organizations need to connect with the community. Right. So I'm hoping that this at this mm -hmm. junction it would create mm -hmm. that bridge um, so that it can continue to work because I I can speak from my experience and I'm sure it's most rural communities or residents experience that we don't go to doctor's appointments one because it's too far two medicine can be very expensive and then most time people don't have insurance mm -hmm. so those are real things but sometimes people are ashamed so they don't go I know. Um, so but these organizations around here are not that way. They do not want you to feel shameful. Right. And a lot of the staff are loving. They are caring. Right. And also they're from the community too. So we want to be able to break those walls down so that right. we can community health is serious yeah. and it yeah. takes all yeah. of us to do that. And this event is going to do that for us. And you know, before I became a nurse, I went to the health department. I took my kids to the health department. They got all of their vaccinations at the health department. Mm -hmm. So just because I'm a nurse practitioner now doesn't mean I've been forever and doesn't mean that I, I, I probably haven't been as poor as some of the people in these communities, but I haven't always been able to pay my bill every month on time either yes, you know exactly. so you walk down roads and you oh, yes. you you know you it's how you become who you are That's right. Right. so um do you need any volunteers yes we do need volunteers that come <laughs> yes. help um tomorrow afternoon um, t um three o'clock we'll be in tarboro um, but go to our website www.abc-2.net or you can email me um, to know these locations and actually come in Tarboro on tomorrow and Friday we're going to canvas the town barber shops and things to make them aware about the event that's taking place on okay. Saturday and then also volunteers on Saturday to help um, man the stations the water stations and also get to interact with um, the world changes is what we call our young people mm -hmm. and meet the leadership team um, who I'm so also proud of um, they are an amazing group of yes, young people are. that are from the area mm -hmm. many are in college but they intern with ABC too because we always want to keep them connected right. to their home right. um, so um, and they have cute titles like I think I'm a CEO I'm the chief empowerment officer uh -huh. you know mama in, cha in charge that's right <laughs> positive impact officer that's that we have right. Dylan, who is the Chief Innovations Officer, mm -hmm. um, he's he developed our website, he created our app, oh, um, wow. he's leading in the GIS Club because that's his mm -hmm. thing. Um, and he's a grad student at NC State now, um, working on tourism and agritourism wow. and utilizing his GIS skills in that mm -hmm. setting to bring mm -hmm. it together. Mm -hmm. We have Kelsey, who's from Enfield, who's the Director of Energy and Climate Justice. Um, so she's working on the climate justice. That's a big thing now, but she's been working on that for about two years and leading the initiative for a resiliency organizing hub for Northeastern North Carolina so that as a region, we're starting to work together around disaster preparedness, making sure we know all our resources that are in the community mm -hmm. and how we stay connected mm -hmm. and prepared and ready not just for ourselves but for each other as neighbors because when storms come when things come they don't look at boundaries mm -hmm. there is no boundaries oh in community. no there's no color there's no boundary there's That's no right. because when you've lost you've lost whether right. it's a McMansion or a you know well, single well, wide trailer well, it's exactly. your home and your possessions mm -hmm. and you've lost that's it. right so that's yeah um so do you know what the percentage of like herford county what percentage they have of people that are vaccinated very good so the four counties that we work in are all around the same 34 percent and what's the state average? Do you the know the state that? average is about 54, almost at 60 percent. Okay, so um, about half. Right, and I think we need about 75, 80 percent for herd immunity. So we still have a ways to go. Mm -hmm. um, but in these four counties that we're very specifically, we're looking at the census tract, which is important for us at ABC too, oh, yeah. because we was really heavily engaged in the census 2020. Mm -hmm. So teaching the young people the importance of census, how it connected to voting, mm -hmm. now how it's connected to this vaccinations mm -hmm. is because we're looking at specific census tract to be able to look at in these counties, there are tracts that are 10%. Sure. 
twelve mm percent. -hmm. So that helps us to really hone in to have conversation. What's going on? What is the problem? Do you need some support? Right. Do you not have access? Do you not know anything about that the vaccinations mm -hmm. are available out there? Because there are some people who thought it was a cost to get the vaccine. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, so you're able yeah. to do some very t in, um, strategic work in the communities and with the community partners at the community resource fair. These people not only need to be vaccinated, they also need access to health care. They also need access to water and food. So why not connect and yes. we come at once yeah. to address all the needs at one time right. to improve community health? Right, right. Yeah. Oh, so I, I want to go back to um, cooking and preparing <laughs> food. I love that because I didn't know how to cook okra. I'm not from here. I looked at that stuff and the only thing I ever saw in okra was it was sliced I mean. and it was slimy and I said, I'm not eating that. Yeah. But one time at the farmer's market here in town, there was a chef that, because they have a culinary school at Nash Community College, and he came and he showed how to cook okra. And I've eaten it ever since. Yes. I love it. I grow it because I love it. And it's good My for husband you. thinks I'm crazy. Yes. <laughs> you're eating that stuff. But I, I really, I do love it. So they you. didn't have okra in Minnesota where I was. No. But I, um, I've talked to various people about healthy eating. And, and you're right that, you know, you can give people a head of broccoli. But if they don't know how to cook it. That's right. They might as well throw it out in the compost pile. Yeah. So it's really important. I think it's great that you have that chef there that's doing that and showing because it's not really hard. It's just different. That's right. That's right. So it's not buying something wrapped in cellophane and sticking it in the microwave. Mm. You've got to, you know, we got to get away from that because oh, that's yes. what makes us so unhealthy and that's what causes all this heart disease and everything else because of the that that food is is not there's hardly even any nutritional value in it that's true so i'm really excited about that so i wanted to tell you all that again it's saturday this saturday right. from 11 to 4 at edgecombe community college in tarboro oh, and free food, y'all, free water, free vaccines, free friends. You can meet new people. Oh, yes. I mean, I think it's just, it, it's a win-win. Win. Yeah. It's a win-win. Win. And so you've done Halifax County. That's correct. And you're doing Edgecombe. And then where are you going? Then we're going to Hereford County. Um, we're still working on the last minute logistics. Like I said, it has to be community driven it has to come from the community mm -hmm. and Hereford County like every other county is amazing and is unique the culture the yes. richness so I want to make sure that comes out and also but we'll be in downtown Ahoski uh, providing the vaccine shots there but also um, they have their farmers market they have a third Saturday market um, so it's all coming together mm -hmm. beautifully and when you're doing the Lord's work it does that's right um, he puts it all together um, so it's all coming together beautifully. Mm -hmm. That's next Saturday in a Husky from 11 to 4. Um, if there's anyone interested in being a, a part of the community resource fair, there's still time. We don't want to turn anybody away. If you are someone that provides um, grow herbs like basil and things and dry, we need you. Yeah. Because those are things that are good to pour into our soul, but they also... Um, have great benefits to us. So, uh, and also, if there are individuals out there that want to sing and perform, we have that space for you ah, also. Ah, um, great. There also will be fitness. There will be line dancing. There will be yoga to be able to incorporate fitness. Um, and it's also a responsibility because this is I want to see you do yoga. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, just to give it to, I know there's other yoga studios out there, but Brenda Green in Enfield, she has a yoga studio downtown Enfield, is absolutely amazing. Please support. Always about supporting our local businesses, please. Absolutely. We have to support. And when I say local, I mean local. Right. Mom and pop shops that they right. called back in the day. We got to support them. Right. Um, that's a part of our community health also. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be the community health. For, you know, I mean, we've got some big corporations that can come, you know, Rocky Mount was blessed. They've just gotten um, de de Department of Motor Vehicles, and I think they've got over 400 employees. And so what a blessing that is, you know. But it's not those big places that are going to make, it's the moms and pops. It's the small little shops. They're the, that's the backbone of our of our. Um, our economy and you know we've got to 
we got to do whatever we can. And you got to remember that when you are buying a, a some goat soap from somebody who made it from yes. their own goat yeah. milk, you're supporting them. <laughs> you're helping them pay their bills. This is what pharmacy Lisa yes. over here in Edgecombe County. Um, she comes to the farmer's market from time to time in Halifax. Lisa Chapel. Yes. Amazing soap. Yes. I am a... <laughs> Are you a goat soap? I am. I am. <laughs> well, she I'm really excited well. because she, um, you know, they're doing that whole dairy now. And they're going to be selling cheese, goat yes. cheese, goat oh, wow. milk, awesome. goat yogurt, goat ice cream. Yeah. I'm not yeah. sure I'm on sold on all that yeah. stuff. But... <laughs> But um, I, I okay. yeah, I know yes. Lisa. I actually bought some chickens from her because oh, wow. we have chickens, and she had too many. So <laughs> yes. yeah, she's really a sweet yes. lady. Yes. So yeah, it's, yes. it's a small world. Yes. We probably have more acquaintances that we. I'm know. sure. Although I don't know a whole lot of folks in Edgecombe County. Not that I don't want to. I just, I guess I probably do patient wise. I don't know, but. You know, I don't go to Ed to Tarboro much. Although I do go over there and eat. I like their ribeyes. Yes. I go over there and eat. So you need to go to Halifax at um the Hen and Hall. The Hen and Hall. Yes. I've been there. Yes, it's delicious. They're awesome. Mm -hmm. And they get the fresh vegetables and they like mm -hmm. all people yep. excited about yep. it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I've been there, and um, we made reservations okay. and. Um, you know, we got there a little early because we didn't know how long it would take. We didn't know what to expect. So, you know, we just wanted to go and mm -hmm. enjoy the whole thing. And all these other people came in after us, and they were getting seated. And I'm like, well, what's that all about? Mm -hmm. But as they explained that they only have a, a kitchen that's big enough to do so many plates mm -hmm. at once. And so if you had your 6 o'clock reservation, see, I had the 6.30. Mm -hmm. Well, the 6 o'clock was got there even if it was just at yeah. six, they still, you know, it, it's not a first come, first serve. Mm -hmm. And once you get the food, uh, it's worth the it wait. Yes, it is. Oh, my. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was really good. We enjoyed it very much. We went with two other couples. So, that yeah, is. so I've been there. And, um, yeah, and then, of course, you know, Tarboro has the, on the square, that's yes. a local, too, so. All right, we got a couple yes. minutes, so tell tell the people what you want them to know. Reinforce and sell your points. Right. Come on out Saturday, <laughs> this Saturday at Edgecombe Community College in Tarboro. Um, it's a Vax Bout party, but it's a community resource fair. It's about community coming together, um, reclaiming our community. Even though we've been through a lot, there's a chance to see each other, mm -hmm. but social distancing. But come on out. Get you some water, some good food, some good music, good vibes. And if you need to get vaccinated, I strongly encourage you to get vaccinated this yes. Saturday at yes. the block party. Yes. So look forward to seeing all of you come out to help. Lend a helping hand if it's just passing the water to someone or just tell someone hi, it's good to see you. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so come on out. This is our time to come together no matter who you are, black, white, blue, green. Um, this is our space. Yeah. This is our community. That's right. And We've got to learn to live together. Yes. God made us all. Exactly. He made black people and white people. That's I right. Mean, you right. Know, he, do, he doesn't make any junk. Yes. And I know in every community, in every culture, music and food. Is where is that? That's so exactly that's what you got right. to say. That's exactly you right. You it. can't beat yeah. it. And it's free. Yes. Music, yeah. food, and free. Now, you can't beat that. And, right. and just come and get educated about the vaccination. We do have people there to answer your question with the fear that you hear, have. Mm -hmm. But like, like the Bible said, fear, fear yourself. Mm -hmm. So just come and ask. And then when you get educated about it, then you'll be like, oh. Okay, right. I'm ready to go take the shot. Right. Then right. after you take your shot, you go and eat, and you dance with the music. Just having fun. <laughs> That's right. That's what it's all having about. Having fun. We yes. can be educated, be fed, yes. and have fun. It's, yes, yes, it's a win-win. Yes. And it's for everybody. Right. You do, it's not just for those who are unvaccinated to get vaccinated. Yeah. This is an event for the entire community, yes. for your families. Come on out. There is information there that you're going to need to share with your family and friends. So come. Absolutely. And this is August month for um, Family Fun. Yes, it is National yeah, Family Fun National Month. Oh, is it? Yes. Yeah, so come on out. So oh, family, family. Well, yeah. And we can do some go. yoga together. Yes, yes. Yes, awesome. And one more thing. Excuse yes, ma'am. Oh, she's coming alive now. <laughs> <laughs> I come at the end, yes. <laughs> Yes, today is Mr. Chester's birthday. Yes, so, happy hey. birthday, Chester. Thank you. Yes, thank you. 
they both get this is so a blessing good. yes 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 all right thank you so much for watching yes. thanks so much for coming it thank was really it interesting i really time. enjoyed it yes. i've got lots to talk to people about when i go back to work tomorrow all right cool. so thanks so much for watching here's to your good health and we will see you next week with another show who knows what it'll be <laughs> Maybe I'll bring a turtle one day. No, no I'm just right. kidding. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good Thanks night. so much for watching. We'll bye see you bye. next week. Bye-bye. Be blessed. <laughs>